Bakewell is an attractive town perched on a hill beside the River Wye. It's unusual in several ways, but is famous for one thing, it's pudding. And Bakewell pudding should never be called a tart. Among the quaint, old world streets, there are signs of puddings everywhere. It's a kind of egg and jam concoction in a pastry case, but the story goes that it was created in this local hotel in the mid 19th century as a mistake. But the disaster turned out a success and the recipe was smuggled out to one of two bakers in the town. The question today is which one? Each still claims the distinction, keeping its real original recipe secret. So who can blame others for exploiting the Bakewell name? There's even a tart shop now, just to make some point or other. In stark contrast to all this, Bakewell is also known for its annual two-day show and weekly cattle market. It also has the headquarters of the National Park Authority and a 14th century bridge over the Wye. It is at the eastern end of this bridge that our six-mile walk begins, at one of the town's many car parks. Our route heads straight uphill northeast, first by road, then through a golf course and wood. It now turns southeast over a surprising swathe of pasture land, before turning downhill through woodland to join the River Wye and back to Bakewell. Our walkers are Fraser, Anne, 12-year-old Alexander and 8-year-old Charlotte. Cross the road at the car park corner and head uphill northeast out of town. It's the old station road, now signposted to a small industrial zone. Within a few yards, the golf course and wood appear ahead to the right the first tinkle of anticipation on this short but delightful walk. The old station is now the car park for walkers and cyclists along the Monsell Trail and you can hire a bike here for a different kind of day. But instead branch right before the station car park and cross the old rail bridge over the trail. Immediately past the former station house, turn right off the road, up a stony track. The bustle of Bakewell already seems far behind. Through the golf course, keep safely to the path, and the players will thank you for it and be able to concentrate on their game. Into the woods proper now, always making sure you climb the main track steadily in a general north-east direction. Crossing several other paths, it's a good way of gaining reasonable height almost before you know it. At the top, a mile from the town, turn out of the wood onto a lane turn right for only 20 yards and right again up a wide track. This is the gateway to a very different world. A rural hideaway perched between Bakewell to the right and the Chatsworth estate to the left. The plantation of trees ahead is a good marker. Keep to the right of them and follow the track round their perimeter. Suddenly, 
Over the shoulder of the rise ahead appears the prairie, a great expanse of grassland called Colton Pastures, edged on almost all sides by woods and forestry. Expect it to be breezy, but the breeze, like the view, clears away those workaday cobwebs. Carry on walking right to the marker post before turning off right and heading into the grassy beyond. Southeast to the right of two lone trees. Be ready to wrap up against the breeze, which here seems to grow with the grass. Continue striking out direct for the gateway. Almost unnoticed, only a hundred yards to your left is a secret oasis. A pool of gentle charm, well worth the detour. Back on the prairie path, continue in a gentle curve left, staying 300 yards from a line of telegraph poles. Eventually the great valley of Chatsworth opens up to your left in perfect harmony, but the house itself remains out of sight. Pass the corner of the forest and in a few yards turn onto a bridle track to cross into the wood, leaving Chatsworth behind. That's worth another day out. The path turns through a series of very pretty glades, a kind of woodland stage set. In a few minutes, by a telegraph pole, it crosses to the right, back over to the Bakewell side. The map may be hard to follow. Watch for the signs coming out to a Belvedere viewpoint over the valley. A little further on, Bakewell comes back into your life in the distance. This side of the upland plateau already very distinct from the open prairie. The path begins to drop downhill, through a wood, roughly south, passing all attempts to lure you off course. Though in spring, especially, there is much to see. track steadily down until the wood gives way to more open ground at the valley's end, revealing the next stage of the route. Emerging at a junction of farm tracks, ignore the Bakewell sign doubling back. Instead, cross around the head of the valley, now southwest. In 300 yards, turn right again, this time with a Bakewell sign. Easy farm walking now, which brings you eventually to a short footpath, leading to a metal fence around Haddon Hall Estate. Follow this, through a manicured kind of landscape, and out onto a lane, turning downhill. Haddon Hall, well obscured here among the trees, is a fine Tudor building, one of the best in Britain. And so the route comes down to the River Wye, another of those superb trout streams in this limestone area. Just before a bridge, turn right to head back towards Bakewell, through pastures nudging the river. It's a fine rural reminder of all that's best of this short and very English walk. There are just a couple of last minute refinements to get you home. Halfway along, drop down the field to pick up the path at the river's edge. And head towards one of the best possible views of Bakewell, 
traditional heart of the National Park. One final style in the corner of the field brings you to the showground and routes out right to the road, a couple of hundred yards from the car park. Hey there, just time for dessert, and what do you think it is?